A new racing car is brought onto the circuit. With it comes the optimism of the designers, crew, and driver. The car, a British Racing Motors model, designed and built in BRM's Bourne plant, and co-sponsored in the 1970 Canadian American Challenge Cup Series by Castro Oils. The driver, George Eaton, Canadian. At 24, he's one of the youngest competitors on the Formula One Grand Prix and Can-Am circuits. Attention, Can-Am competitors, you have 20 minutes of warm-up. 20 minutes of warm-up. prior to the race enable the engine to reach its operating temperature. Let the driver test the brakes and scrub in the tires. Adjustments to the suspension may take more than a season to sort out, and the driver must be sensitive to the responses of his car. The rapport between driver and mechanic is vitally important. He's the only means of communication between the moving vehicle and the mechanic. Driver's meeting, one minute. Oh, here it is. Yeah. We hope that up to date, both of you had a reasonably good time. Nothing sorted out. Nothing more. That's a lot of problems. Uh, there's a few points we'd like to bring to your attention about the race today. First of all, it is 198.75 miles long, the race. 75 laps. We intend to get you rolling off the front of the. Each circuit requires a different suspension tune-up, and final adjustments have to be made, even if it's a matter of minutes to race time. George Eaton's first race was in a Sunbeam Alpine in 1965, and became a full-time professional in 1969, placing him in competition with the world's top racing drivers. Watching the race, it would be better to stand behind the fence, please. Do not sit on the fence. The fences are there for your protection. George Eaton going by and looking just a bit sneaky, going into uh, McLaren Corner. 
Ready. Position. Number 16, which is the ABS shadow, and he's come into the pit. He is leaking gas, the word we have. the night before qualifying trials for the next race. A good lap time tomorrow will make for an advantageous starting position on race day. Eaton's there to chat with mechanics for a while, deciding how the car will be set up specifically for this circuit. The final chance to test their calculations comes on practice day. What's going through the mind of a driver when he's behind the wheel? In practice, it's, it's definitely a feeling of speed and just sort of trying to extract all you can out of the automobile and, and sort of trying to get a good rhythm going. If you don't have good rhythm, then, then you become disjointed. You'll make two turns and, and miss two turns and braking and acceleration will be good in one area and bad in another. And that's no good when you have slow times. Yeah. Well, I'm usually less critical of the car during the race um, and more critical of myself and my position in relation to the other people. of the car or you're not going to develop it along the lines that it will require to be set up for any given racetrack. You're not going to sort the car out and get the maximum out of it, but during the race you can't stop and come in and have them change anything on it, so there's no point in really worrying about the car past that's uh, carrying you to the end. You have to pay some heed to it, but that's more to make it live, where you don't try to make it live in practice, but you do try to sort out the handling. It seems it's dodging a lot on the straight. It seems that on the left-hand turns, the left-hand rear wheel really seems to be pushing it more. So we've taken that tweak a little bit down there in that one now, it seems. Okay. Is it taking it a little better? No, it's start, the tweak is starting to show a little bit. I don't know whether that's just because I'm going a bit faster. Yeah. Get a little bit faster. Good, sir. Experts from the racing industries are available to see how their products are functioning and to give advice. And uh, also, the center wire is cold and the cement, that there's a little extra cement laying around there and it hasn't even changed color. It should, yeah, it should be, uh, yeah, gray. So you might check the timing. Yep. George won't be up late tonight. After traveling some 12,000 miles in the last week, he needs plenty of rest for tomorrow's race. The travel is quite extensive when you run Can-Am and Formula One because that means that every week you fly across the ocean for the entire summer, and so that creates a bit of a time zone problem, and it gets to the point where you give up thinking of time in, in the normal concept and I just learn to sleep when you're tired and stay awake when you're not and I generally just gauge it that I'm awake and alert for the race. This is the last chance for the mechanics to get the car set for the race. 
if they're lucky, they might get a couple of hours sleep tonight. used to like to be photographed and I didn't used to like to see my picture and I didn't used to like to be in the newspaper and all that but now it's it's, it's sort of just something that goes along it no longer affects me negatively that say they don't give away any secrets but drivers like to get together to discuss track conditions their common problem before race time I don't see it getting any better because they swept it after the sports cars had been out. Did before they? the Did they? cars were out, yeah. Well, what's making it? <laughs> it's just a wee bit dirty all the way through. How did you reboard it? It's uh, not bad. It's got a few things to sort out, that's for sure. It's still dodging a bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's getting... Well, this circuit's very bumpy anyway. Yeah. You know, it's undulated. Yeah. Can't help much having Roger work in the car either. Nah. He'll be all right. George's manager understands well the competitive spirit of a racing driver. Uh, the racing requires a tremendous intensity and a very high competitive spirit, not just the average sportsman spirit, but that extra special competitive factor that makes any professional athlete. George has this quality, and he's very highly, uh, highly honed mind, very sharp mind, very alert, and his same uh, depth of interest and intensity of interest in what he's doing applies to his overall personality and other ventures that he participates in. It was a small thing that broke, 10 cent bolt. That was it, it was over. It's just one of those things, you know, it could have finished, could have finished, could have finished third, fourth, you know. With a look, you win a race, then you think, Christ, the last nine failures were all worth it. And so, just look forward to Edmonton now.